Our next presenter is Paulette Cooper. Paulette is the mother of two daughters and two sons-in-laws, grandmother of four grandkids and wife for 46 years to her husband, Bob. Originally from St. Louis, Missouri, she and Bob have traveled all over Texas during most of their marriage. A fun fact about Paulette is she graduated from the University of Houston the same week that her daughter graduated from high school. Paulette says that she's been around for a while and during that time has had many aha moments, but one stands out above them all, one that changed her life forever. Here to give her speech entitled, The Power of One, Miss Paulette Cooper. all. Thank you all for being here and thank the wonderful people who put this event together. I'm just honored to be here. Thank you very much. A long time ago I was watching TV and I saw one image that never left me. Just one image. It was Rwanda, the genocide that was going on. There was a poor dead person on the ground, a soldier with his big rifle jumping up and down, and I said, oh my God, that's horrible. Somebody ought to do something about that, and I immediately ran out and did absolutely nothing. Fast forward a few more years, and I saw the same thing happening again, only this time the country has changed, and now it's called Darfur. I believe that one person makes a difference. Just like the sea otter flaps its little wing, ripples. A butterfly flaps its wings in a tsunami on the other side of the world. I saw what was happening in Darfur. And one day, I picked up the Dallas Morning News and read one article about one junior high kid in Garland, Texas whose name I don't know. I don't know how to find him, and I probably never will. But he changed my life. Changed it totally. I read the article. It said to call the, Dal uh, the Dallas Bee Center the, if, if you were interested in what was happening in Darfur. And I thought, oh, uh -huh, OK. Um, and then I picked up a little book written by Anthony DeMello, a little snippet of a story in there about the man who was walking down the street, saw a starving child and said, God, why aren't you doing something about this? And that night, there was a knock on his door. And he opened the door. The voice said, I'm God. And I'm here to tell you what I did about the starving child you saw. I created you. And I thought, oops. <laughs> and then a little while later in the same day I saw the second half of a scripture I was well familiar with the first part it's in Matthew and it says what you do for the least of these you do for me and I thought oh okay and then I read the second half and it said what you do not do for the least of these you do not do for me and oh boy I knew I was in trouble <laughs> so the next day I called the Dallas Peace Center and asked them if they needed anything done about Darfur and there was this funny pause and the woman said well we're doing a mailing this afternoon you want to come help off I went to the Dallas Peace Center all because of one junior high kid through the Dallas Peace Center we met all kinds of different people, um, just all kinds. There, a man in Athens built a water drilling rig. We met some people from an oil company through the Dallas Peace Center because of the junior high kid. They were leaving their business in Khartoum. They picked up the tab to ship the drilling rig from Athens, Texas, all the way out to Al Fasher in Darfur. Wouldn't have met him without that kid in junior high. One. 
He made such a difference in my life. Went to an African art show. I heard a man say, oh, my son-in-law is just back from Darfur. And my head snapped around like something out of the Exorcist movie. I said, what? What did you say? And he repeated it, and I said, oh, my God, that's where I want to go. I want to help. And he said, well, we're having a meeting Friday evening. I said, oh, I'd love to come. Where is it? Your house. <laughs> True story. We had the meeting, and the next thing you know, we were on the road. There's the interstate in Darfur. You can see the two lanes of tire tracks in the sand. It taught us trust in our driver, and it taught us how to pray real hard that there would never be a sandstorm. But we finally got to our destination, and we were there to fix water pumps. Typical water pump right there, and you know, got the crew together, fixed it. Little kids carried the water. They put it in a, what they call a jerry can. It holds eight gallons. Eight gallons of water weighs 40 pounds. And these little kids carry it all over because if the women go out, they're raped. This is an area of the world where no matter, no matter what, the women are blamed and it's their fault. They become ostracized, especially if they ever become pregnant. Did you know that when your shower runs for one minute, just one minute, you've used more water than the average Darfuri gets in a day. I was astonished when I heard that. I couldn't believe it. The water they drink looks like that, unless it comes from a water pump. We got to a village to fix the water pump. And when we got there, we got out of the car, and there was a woman standing there. I say woman, she was probably all of 14. All of a sudden, she started to cry, and she held on to me so tight and just cried and cried and cried. What's the matter? Through the translator, I found out she's all of maybe 14. Daddy had her shackled. Do you know why? She wanted to go to school. She wanted to finish her education. Because when you educate a woman, you change the world. And that's all she wanted to do. And her father said, no. I want you to marry this wonderful man I have for you. He's only 54. He's got a couple of other kids. You'll be so happy, honey. She threatened to run away. That's the result. We told him, if you want your water pumps fixed, get the shackles off. He did, and we fixed the water pumps in their village. The people were so excited. Oh, they were happy. The animals gathered. It was wonderful. Everyone was there. Happiness, water, and her shackles were off. I wish I could tell you that that story had a happy ending. I like to believe that it did. But two weeks after we were there, her village was bombed. And I will never know if she made it or whatever happened to her. But I knew, no, she valued an education. I've told that story a number of times to kids in high dropout rate cities. And I always tell them, stay in school. Do it for her. Do it in honor of the shackled woman. And when the water pumps get fixed, the water starts to come out very dark, dark red, and it progresses on. And it gets brighter and lighter and more and more wonderful, and it's drinkable, and it's not so diseased. I had told my little grandson about a girl in an IDP camp, that's an internally displaced persons camp, about a little girl who had no toys except for one. It was a, a, a string, 
probably looked a lot like this. My granddaughter made this for me. It's a little silver bracelet. And he said, Donna, that's not fair. So he ran over to his toy box and he got out a little blue car and he gave it to me to give to someone who did not have a toy. I gave it to this little kid who was taking care of the family goat herd. I put it in his hand and he kept handing it back to me. Put it in his hand again, hand it back. Finally, I put it in his hand, wrapped his fingers around the toy, patted it, turned and ran away so he knew he could keep it. It was his little toy to keep. By the time we were finished with our trip in Darfur, we were able to bring water because of that one kid and the stuff that was set in motion by that one junior high kid in Garland, Texas. 10,000 people got water. Is that amazing? 10,000 people got water because of what one kid did. I could tell you so many other stories. There's one about a little boy the Janjaweed came running through their village. The Janjaweed are the bad guys, and it means devil on horseback. Brian Stottle wrote a book about them. They came through the village and they grabbed the kids out of the mother's arms. One was a little girl, and they just tossed her aside. She was a girl, she was useless, it didn't matter. The other one was a little boy, a little boy. They were afraid he would become a problem if he grew up. So they threw him in the air and used him for target practice. Target practice, a little tiny baby boy. I tell his story so you can share it with others. There's an African expression that says, as I go, I am wearing you. So as you go, I hope you wear some of these stories. When we left, that's happiness, folks. This is a guy who lived in the village where we fixed one of the water pumps. Oh, that's happy. That's happy. One of the things, it's a quote, and I love it. Nathan Hale's son said it. His name was Edward Everett Hale. And he says, I'm only one but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. And I leave you with a quote from Anne Frank, who said, isn't it wonderful to know that you don't have to wait another minute before you start to change the world. And that is the power of one. That is what I learned from one kid in junior high in Garland, Texas, whose name I do not know, probably will never know, but 10,000 people got water because of him. Thank you.